Hi, and welcome to the iNaturalist and BioBlitz e-workshop. This workshop is going to cover the basics of how to use iNaturalist and also talk a little bit about what a BioBlitz is. What is iNaturalist? Well, maybe you've heard of iNaturalist. iNaturalist is both an app that you can download to your smartphone as well as a website. And iNaturalist is a crowdsource data platform. So it's designed to let people get out and take photographs with their phones of nature, different plants and animals, and then to upload that to the iNaturalist app and share that information with anyone else who's a member of iNaturalist. And what this does is it creates official records of species that were seen in a particular location and in a particular day and provides us with very valuable species occurrence data. How does iNaturalist work? Well, to get started, you use your phone and you go out and find something living. You take a clear focus photo, or even better, multiple photos of that organism. And the good news is your phone knows where you are, what day and time it is when you take the photo, and all of that information is going to be recorded with the photo when you upload it. If you have a network connection, then iNaturalist will actually um, suggest what it thinks the organism is when you tap the little box that says, what did you see? And this is pretty cool because it's actually based on things that are visually similar, so it uses artificial intelligence to figure that out, uh, or that uh, have been seen nearby. If you don't like what the iNaturalist app suggests, then you can also type in your own suggestion. And it'll also tell you how confident it is, whether it's pretty sure or whether it's not so sure. Um, and generally, if you don't know, then you can um, basically record what, I mean, for example, in this case, you might not know what uh, genus or species this flower is, but you know it's a flower. So you could put flowering plant. You can get as general as you want to or as specific um, as you can. Then you're going to hit share, and when you do that, your observation is automatically uploaded to iNaturalist, where then the iNaturalist community, which is other users of iNaturalist, can confirm or refine the ID. So what happens next is that you have shared and I've created and shared an observation and hopefully by doing that you uh, maybe learned something like if you didn't know what the flower was and um, now uh, the, the iNaturalist app gave you a suggestion it helps you learn what things are. Um, it also helps you to keep track of everything that you've seen and you can also explore what other people are seeing all over the world. So. How does uh, an observation become something that is considered to be um, what we would say research grade? Well, basically when you upload your photograph, other iNaturalist users are going to view it on the website and they can come in and agree or disagree with what they, um, what they, what, what you, what you say that the organism is. So just like anyone can make observations on iNaturalist, anyone can help with the identifications too. In fact, there's over 800,000 iNaturalist members. Um, some of these members are, you know, um, just amateurs uh, or they're scientists and there's people who are just interested in nature, students, park rangers, hunters. It's really just a community for anyone interested in nature um, and sharing their observations and helping other people identify their observations. So in this case, you can see that this is um, a photograph of a helmeted squash bug. So the observation says helmeted squash bug, and then somebody came in and said that they agreed with this uh, observation, that this was a helmeted squash bug. And so it then becomes um, confirmed that this is, uh, this is actually what the user suggested it was. So after you make your observation, um, you're basically contributing to this global iNaturalist database, and that database is showing when and where species are found. A research-grade observation, which means that um, it's been confirmed by other iNaturalist users, it also has to 
uh, contain a location where the organism was seen, a date when the organism was seen. Um, typically, it needs to have some kind of media, like a photo, but also sound recordings can be used, like, for example, with frogs or with birds. And then a consensus by the iNaturalist community. Um, you can even go in and uh, disagree with or refute uh, an observation that someone else makes. So um, what began as just a photo is now becomes this official species occurrence. And that data um, is very valuable uh, because it's now data that can be used by um, researchers and um, people who are tracking biodiversity all over the world. Another cool thing about iNaturalist is that it can actually help you become a better naturalist. It can help you to learn to ID species. Um, it teaches you species. So for example, um, here we have uh, two toads. And so if you look at the bottom where it says activity, you'll see that the two people who uploaded the information about the toads, they didn't know what kind of toads they were, but they knew they were toads. So they put, you know, one said North American toads, one said true toads. But then, if you want to be able to tell the difference between the two, um, these are uh, these two toads occur here in Kentucky. You can actually tell them apart by counting how many bumps are in the large dark blotches on their back. So the Fowler's toad there on the left typically have three or four bumps per blotch, but the American toads have only one. So if you get a clear enough photo, you could go in and look at other people's photos of toads and help them to make that identification and you're also teaching yourself how to become a better naturalist and do a better job at IDing these organisms. So the iNaturalist community uh, made headlines just uh, not too long ago because it actually expanded the range of um, this pretty incredible fish, the hoodwinker sunfish. Mola tecta, and it was the first observation in North America on iNaturalist, and it was um, then uh, they didn't realize that it was even in um, North America anymore because it hadn't been seen it, since 1890, and so these iNaturalist users took this photograph. They didn't know what they had found, but they knew it was something interesting. They uploaded it to iNaturalist, and boom, now we know that they are still here in North America. Just some other fun examples. Um, this was a birder who was out, saw a cool crab, took a photograph, and then all of a sudden, um, because the observation has that, um, you know, the photograph as, long, as well as the, the, the location data, then now we know that this uh, crab, this fiddler crab, actually is um, 240 kilometers outside of uh, what the range of what they originally thought of where this crab was found. The nine-banded armadillo is currently expanding its range, um, and this is happening as the armadillo moves north um, and east. And so actually we're seeing this process in real time on iNaturalist by looking at the observations. You can kind of watch it spread over time um, as it expands its range. It's actually happening in Kentucky right now. And then sometimes you just get uh, really interesting observations. In this case, there was a, um, uh, a guy who saw what he knew was a weird looking bird. He thought it was maybe a juvenile bald eagle. He didn't know what it was. Um, took a photograph, put it on iNaturalist, and it turned out that it was this rare crested caracara that um, uh, was, was visiting this location in Vermont. iNaturalist can also be really important for helping uh, land managers and researchers monitor the spread of invasive species. Um, and this can be really important for things like knowing where they occur, uh, figuring out how they might be spreading, and then targeting management practices to remove invasives. One good example of this that's happening right now is with the spotted lanternfly. Um, so the spotted lanternfly is originally from Asia, but it fairly recently made its way over to the United States and it is spreading from, you can see the areas around Pennsylvania and New York, and it's gradually spreading east. And these are, uh, these are observations on iNaturalist, and so you can actually see how it's, um, the, there's a cluster there, and then it's um, being spotted in other areas as it moves outward. And the spotted lanternfly, even though it's a really beautiful uh, insect, 
it's actually this huge threat to the agricultural industry because it threatens billions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of jobs for people working in um, the hardwood and timber industries because it destroys the trees, as well as um, things like grapes and apples. Um, and so it's actually made its way to Pennsylvania and most recently has now been spotted in Ohio. So land managers can actually go in and it's um, like citizen science data because all of these people are recording locations. And so it takes the work out of having to go around on foot and look for these things, um, like especially with invasive plants, it helps land managers to target um, target their management and removal of invasives. So this is an example of um, an area in the Cook County Forest Preserves in Cook County, Illinois, where they are tracking and um, targeting the removal of a particular invasive plant. It's actually pretty, but it's invasive. Um, another important part of the citizen science aspect of iNaturalist is that it can be used for documenting different behaviors. So for example, here you see this, um, this mason bee, and in the picture of the mason bee, it is uh, on this plant. And so this is actually uh, documenting this relationship between this bee and this particular species of plant. And so here you see that the bee is actually collecting nest materials and that those um, nest materials come from this associated plant. So it can help establish these kind of relationships and document different behaviors. iNaturalist can also be used for monitoring rare populations of organisms. So one good example of this is that um, Kentucky, the um, Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves, actually has a project on iNaturalist where every um, plant that somebody observes that is within a certain um, distance from a road actually goes into this project and is recorded and that's the reason for that is because these disturbed habitats along the sides of roads are um, actually uh, they, they, they've, they're finding these really interesting and rare plants that um, maybe aren't um, as common elsewhere in Kentucky, but they're, they're making use of this disturbed habitat. And so all of these observations get recorded, and then botanists from Kentucky Nature Preserves actually go in regularly and monitor um, these, uh, these plants to look and see if they can find, um, it looks like some pollinators too, I think the moths and butterflies as well get, um, get recorded. And if you're really lucky, um, you might actually discover a new species. Um, so here you can see uh, the example where it says the app that aims to gamify biology has amateurs discovering new species. So there's a new species of an insect and then um, the new species of the Indian poison frog that was uh, somebody took a photo, uploaded it to iNaturalist and um, then found out that, oh wow, we found a brand new species. Okay, so one important thing with using iNaturalist is that you want to make good observations because you want those observations to become research grade, meaning that you want someone else to come in and be able to correctly identify that organism. Uh, and so to do that, sometimes there's different characteristics that a plant or an animal has that allow you to identify um, what that species is. And so if you take, for example, multiple photos, then it will allow you to hopefully capture different features uh, of that, uh, that organism. For example, taking photographs of plants, sometimes it's really important you take photos of the leaves, but sometimes you want to take pictures of the buds or the stems. Um, and so you want to uh, take a lot of photos and also try different angles, capture different features of the organism, you can also use your hands in the photo because the hands help to give a sense of scale and can help you to focus your camera, especially if it's something like macro, like something small, like the bud on a, um, a twig, or if you're looking at um, a small insect. And then if you want, you can also go in and crop and scale your photo and make sure that it's focused before you upload it because there's nothing worse than going into taking a photo that you have something you found that's really awesome and then going into iNaturalist and it turns out it was blurry um, because now that critter is probably gone and um, you, you, didn't, you didn't get a chance to find your new and rare species or just to record that species. 
One good example of how some organisms can actually be really tricky to identify um, are sedges. Sedges, uh, you need to record a lot of different things, so not just the actual different parts like the leaves and the stems and the flowering parts and the seeds, but you may need to also, for example, take a picture of its um, habitat. Um, so all of these things, sedges are notorious for being really difficult to ID, but there are experts out there and they go on to iNaturalist and, you know, if you have enough different um, characteristics of that plant, they might be able to ID it. You can also include evidence of organisms. So for example, if you find some coyote scat, you upload a picture of that, then you say, ah, here's proof that coyotes have been here. Um, ant mounds are really good for IDing the species of ants. There you can see a tree that's been um, eaten by a beaver, and then it looks like tracks as well. So um, evidence of organisms, even if you don't see the organisms themselves, can also be recorded. So what should you observe? Well, if it is living, then it is fair game. Um, and don't feel like you only have to observe things that are unusual or rare. Um, if you think about it, the American chestnut tree used to be one of the most common and abundant trees um, in the United States, but because of the chestnut blight, it's now um, reduced significantly. But having an original record of where, where it was and um, you know maybe being able to go out and find um, organisms that are, um, you know, that are resilient or living in disturbed areas outside of the typical range of the chestnut would be very valuable. And now with iNaturalist, we have that opportunity. So um, it's important to record anything and everything as long as it's living. Uh, one important thing is to always be sensitive. You know, you don't want to trespass and um, you, you know, you don't want to harm uh, organisms as you are photographing them or, you know, to harass or molest any organisms. Um, but, you know, just exploring, getting outside, taking pictures of all the living things, um, it, it really creates a very important um, repository of uh, species occurrences that can be used. Okay, and to encourage people to get out and record, make those uh, observations, uh, sometimes there are these events called bioblitzes. So EKU's Division of Natural Areas is currently running a bioblitz, which might be why you're here. And um, we're using iNaturalist to try to document as many species as possible um, in two of our natural areas, Taylor Fork and Maywoods. And so this is a, uh, a bioblitz is a really important tool for documenting those species occurrence. Um, occurrences and um, looking in, you know, uh, whether it's a park or for an entire city or like the whole state, um, it's making a, and it's updating species lists and showing the ranges. Um, and so it's also important when you're a land manager to to know, um, we you know, we want to know where do species occur and look for invasive species, how to take care of species in that area. And so this is very important for ha having good management decisions. And it's also fun for the participants because they get to learn more about their local nature and it builds community and an appreciation of nature as well. And with iNaturalist, it's never been easier to have a BioBlitz and to get involved with a citizen science project like this. So this is uh, where we're gonna turn it over and say that we hope that you um, will participate in the Division of Natural Areas um, BioBlitz. Um, it will be um, running between September 1st and December 31st, 2020. Go out um, in uh, either Taylor Fork or Maywoods and take photos and take observations. There's going to be first, second, and third prizes for um, the person, the people who have the most observations total and then the people who have the, the most diversity of species, so the, the largest number of different species. And there will be prizes. We will announce the winners in January of next year. And yeah, it will also hopefully teach you a little bit more about um, those organisms that are, are living here in, uh, in Kentucky. Well, thank you for participating and we look forward to seeing your observations soon on iNaturalist.